This printer is available on a Black Friday sale for $179, which is the least expensive that I've seen any 3D printer. Uh, I have a little bit of negativity toward the printer in this review, but after using it for several months, I'm very happy with it, and it's my daily 3D printer. So we'll go ahead and uh, open it up and see what's inside. Looks like we've got um, some accessories here. This is the power adapter. Okay, another box with accessories, power cord, USB cable, a uh, scraper tool to remove prints from the print bed, Allen key, and a 256 megabyte micro SD card, and a piece of uh, folded steel. And I don't know what this is for yet, but it looks really nice, actually. I'm kind of impressed that this is $200. Okay, I figured out what that uh, piece of folded metal was. That's the actual um, filament management uh, system there. Okay, so it's not a touch screen. You have to you have to use the jog dial. The Z axis is not quite right on this. We're gonna go ahead and um, perform the home maneuver. I can see that the tip is actually firmly pressing down into build plate surface there. Use the included Allen key, fill up the paper there a little bit. See, the idea is you're adjusting the screw up and down to adjust the amount of tension between the build plate, the paper, and the print head. And the paper is just about the right fit to, for optimal coverage. Okay, so it may not be the flattest of build plates. Okay, we've got filament loaded up, and we are just about ready to do a test print here. Load up the, actually put the filament into the extruder. One of the things that they recommend is that you cut your filament on an angle like that, forming a point. I think that's so that it, uh, it's easier to thread in rather than pushing at it with a blunt uh, end. So here I'm setting the temperature of the hot end. I'm going to warm it up so that I can go ahead and uh, just manually force some filament through and make sure that everything's working uh, in the hot end. All right, we're at 180. Oh, look at that. Is this moved? Something moved. Hmm, what 
is going on here with this? What in the world? Alright, we've got something strange going on here. Be real careful because the uh, the hot end is hot. In fact, let me turn that off. Aha! So, it has missed, if you can see that, it has missed the entrance to the, the hot end. You see that, how the filament is not going where it's supposed to be going. We'll try bringing it down again and see if we... No, we just miss it. I wonder why that gap is there. It seems like, um... It seems like a larger gap than what should be there. Is it possible that the hot end should actually be up higher? Is that why I had to lower my bed all around? I've pushed that down through. Between the time that I recorded the video and now that I'm editing the video, I've had a couple months to use the printer and my kids have gotten a lot of use out of it as well. One of my biggest complaints is the gap on the hot end between the brass fitting at the end of the Bowden cable and the entrance at the top of the nozzle. Filament will get caught on the edge of the nozzle entrance pretty regularly, so you have to take the filament out and cut it at a different angle or a different angle and another angle and another angle and sometimes it's really, really stubborn and you have to take the fan off and guide it through with a pair of tweezers or a fork or something. I may try to find a small tube that can fit in there to reduce the gap. Additionally, the limit switch on the Z-axis is very inaccurate. Three out of five times that I home the axis, it'll be slightly different from the previous homing. This leads to a lot of bed leveling. Hopefully Monoprice has fixed this in more recent batches. Aside from those two big complaints, we really do like the printer. It has a build quality that surpasses what I would expect at the price point. It's very easy to use. It's really quite accurate other than the Z-axis limit switch issue. And it produces really great prints. Uh, you can probably find a link in the video description below where you can buy your own, which I definitely recommend you should do. Additionally, for some uh, um, support, you can find very helpful user groups on both uh, Reddit and Facebook. There's lots of people that have this printer now and that are willing to share their experiences and tips and tricks on how to get the best prints, how to make calibration easier, and resolve any issues you might have.